Hi everyone, welcome to Naptime Nutrition. I'm Yafi Lavova, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and owner of Baby Bloom Nutrition and Toddler Test Kitchen. Today, I'm going to be discussing why intuitive eating is not right for your child. And if you've been watching my podcast, my my broadcasts anyway, it will soon be podcasts, you know that I'm a big fan of intuitive eating. So why am I telling you that this is the wrong path? The big difference is that we're talking about kids, we're not talking about adults. So the way forward for kids with a healthy and positive eating dynamic is called division of responsibility. And this is a philosophy that was put forth by Ellen Satter, E-L-L-E-N, Oh, E-L-L-Y-N-S-A-T-T-E-R. And you can find her at ellensatterinstitute.org. There's a lot of information there, and I can link to it. Um, just make note of that, because otherwise I will forget. Okay, so why intuitive eating is not right for, for your child? Okay, so let's start out with you want a healthy relationship. You want it for you, and you want it for your kids. And what does a healthy relationship mean? Well, stay tuned. In a few days, I'm going to be posting a link to an article that I wrote on exactly what a healthy relationship with food is. But spoiler alert, it is um, being able to eat um, comfortably, being having confidence in the food choices that you make, not feeling guilt or shame around the foods that you eat. So of course we want this for adults and we want this for kids, but there's a different pathway that takes into account developmental appropriateness as well as um, physical development, emotional development, and appropriate boundaries and who sets those appropriate boundaries. So let's get into it. Um, so let's first define intuitive eating because this is a great thing for you to know as far as, um, as, far as your own relationship with food. Intuitive eating principles, oh, I'll hide my, my thing here. Okay, the intuitive eating principles. Intuitive eating is an idea that you really relinquish control of your, your amount of food that you're eating to your body signals. And it comes with specific principles because this is not just intuitive eating lowercase letters. This is capital intuitive, capital eating. This is a trademarked um, philosophy that was created by a couple of dietitians and is really gaining traction in the nutrition field. So number one, reject the diet mentality. Do kids need to reject the diet mentality? They're not thinking about it. They're not thinking about how food affects their, their body size and how manipulation of food affects their body size. We do have evidence that kids as young as five recognize a link between dieting and weight loss. And that's scary. We don't want our five-year-olds involved with this. In fact, we don't want our 50-year-olds involved with this, but that's a whole other broadcast. So honor your hunger. Yeah, that's great for adults and kids. Make peace with food. Well, kids don't need to make peace with food. They have peace with food. As long as we give them a positive and gentle feeding environment, which is what I'm going to get to, which is division of responsibility, they're not going to have to come back later as an adult and make peace with food. Challenge the food police. Kids do not know what the food police are. We as adults certainly do. They're everyone looking at our plate telling us that you, you should or shouldn't eat beans because everything changes day to day. No, we know that, that there are nutrition truths that are constant. We just don't necessarily have a strong handle on them. So relying on our biology to tell us what's right and wrong in that moment is, is really a good way to move forward. Our, our body is the only calculator that can tell us exactly how much nutrition we need at a given moment and what that nutrition is made of. Respect your fullness. Another thing that is great to pass on to our kids. Discover the satisfaction factor. That, that's kind of linked with fullness as far as kids go. When you get to, uh, to be an adult, you have a lot of different, um, your brain works in different ways and you can really grasp on to more complex concepts. And this is one of them. The difference between fullness and satisfaction is an adult concept. Sometimes they're not the same thing. With children, we do kind of put them in the same category. Honor your feelings without using food. Well, this isn't up to kids. They, they don't have ready access to food. They, they, they go by our schedule that we give them, which is part of a healthy boundary. Respect your body. We should definitely teach kids that. Um, exercise and feel the difference. Kids do not exercise. They have fun. They chase the garbage truck down the street. They jump rope. They run through sprinklers. They swim. But they're not, quote, unquote, exercising. 
and honor your health. This is another thing that kids do not put energy into and don't need to put energy into. Their kids and their focus needs to be being kids. So, so what do we do? The idea is division of responsibility. So in division of responsibility, the parent is in charge of what is served, where it's served, and when it's served. That's it. The food is put on the table, the parent sits down with the kids, and the rest is, well, it's, it's in God's hands, right? It's in the child's hands. Um, the child is, is responsible for whether to eat and how much to eat. And I also like to, like to say the pace at which they eat. And of course, there are boundaries to that as well. Some kids really like to take two hours at a meal. Um, and that's maybe that's a different <laughs> a different broadcast as well. So that's division of responsibility. And that's really where we want to be. As far as parenting our kids, it sets up healthy boundaries. So intuitive eating is a pathway for creating a healthy relationship with food for adults. Kids don't need to, to create a healthy relationship with food. They need to continue the healthy relationship with food that they were born with. They were born with hunger signals. They could tell you as a baby by chewing on their fist, by, by making fists, um, by drooling or rooting, they know when they're hungry and they know when they're full. Even as young as a couple of days, one day even, they know to clamp their mouth and turn sideways from the breast or from the bottle. They know when they're full. Our job as parents is to keep telling our kids that these internal signals are important. They never stop being important, but intuitive eating is a way to reconnect with that. And when you raise kids with these ideas and they grow up with these ideas, they don't need to reconnect with them later on. Intuitive eating relies on independence in food choices. It relies on making your own shopping list and going and buying those things. These, this is not a concept that involves children. Children are not making major nutrition decisions. Intuitive eating is focused on body-mind awareness rather than focusing on the food. And division of responsibility is more of a mix. So it's you are looking at specific foods. You are looking at gentle and creative nutrition exposure, like cooking, like gardening. And I'm going to have a segment, very excited. I'm going to have a gardener on come talk about how to establish an herb garden. Very excited about that. So as far as parenting, we have division of responsibility plus modeling. Okay, not this kind of modeling. Um, the, the kind of modeling where you sit with your child and you enjoy the foods that they're enjoying and you show them that you're enjoying them, that kind of modeling. Modeling how to use utensils and how to use a napkin and how to not throw avocado on the wall, but maybe throw it on the floor so the dog can clean it up. Just kidding. Adults set boundaries for themselves based on years of trial and error and error and error and error. <laughs> But kids need healthy boundaries that are set by their parents or their caretakers. And that's where the big difference is. Who is setting the boundaries? With division of responsibility, it is the person who is preparing the food and making the food choices that sets those healthy boundaries. So why do kids need boundaries? It provides a framework for expectations, for behavior, uh, for, for a lot of different things. Um, and it helps kids feel safe and secure. And these are just general boundaries, help kids feel safe and secure. There's predictability. You know what's coming. Kids have an underdeveloped prefrontal lobe, which means they're not ready for meaningful decision making. As they get older, this changes. And there's an exit strategy to division of responsibility. I spoke on, about it recently with a couple of colleagues about how you get out of division of responsibility. As your child gets older, you start to hand over some of those responsibilities to them. Um, and then they are deciding which color carrot to buy or pepper or, um, or which shape of pasta you're going to be making. Then they're going to decide what the side dish is. And then eventually they decide what the main dish is. And eventually they're in charge of making that side or that main dish. Eventually, they have their own night of the week where they're in charge of making dinner for the whole family. And then beyond that, you send them to college and guess what, they don't have to get a job because they're going to be cooking in the dorm kitchen and the other kids are gonna be paying them because nobody else knows how to cook because they didn't listen to these broadcasts. So we have to, we, we have to encourage a friendly and compassionate attitude with kids and boundaries help them to not focus as much on their own wants and needs, but to focus on the family. 
Um, so Rena Reiser, who owns Mind Over Munchies, she's a health coach and an intuitive eating certified counselor, says that the adult brain works through feelings of negativity, works through negative associations with food and the feelings that come with that. Kids are not ready for that, which is why it's up to the adult to set those boundaries and help the child to have a positive interaction at the table. Oh, did I get through everything? <laughs> so, so division of responsibility encourages kids to observe and honor the biological signals that they were born with, um, within the structure that's set up by the parent. The parent sets the general structure and the child is in charge from there. We need a set schedule for predictability. Caitlin from uh, Mom and Tot Nutrition, and I'm going to give you a whole list of, of Instagram accounts to follow for this awesome information. Um, she said that kids are like Snickers commercial, you know, like hungry, why wait? Wow, now I want a Snickers. Uh, <laughs> they have a hard time feeling the early signs of hunger. So whereas an adult, we can say, hey, I'm getting hungry, kids go from zero to 60 in no time at all. So they need a set schedule in order to, to have that predictability and to feel safe and secure knowing, well, I'm feeling a little hungry right now, but I know there is a meal coming and I don't have to worry about it. Let's see what other slides I had. Okay, I did a, a nap time nutrition on why not to put kids on diets. That one was picked up by Super Healthy Kids and had almost 20,000 views. This is a slide from that one. So no more diets. When we start with division of responsibility and we progress toward competent eater or intuitive eater, we don't have to worry about dieting. Our kids are going to, to meet their nutrition needs and we don't worry as much about body size because we know that all other indicators of health, which are meaningful indicators of health, are going to fall in line. Dieting is a risk factor for both obesity and eating disorders. Interesting, the number one cause of obesity is dieting because we have an unhealthy relationship with food and that's got a lot of, of mental repercussions. Dieting is the most important predictor for developing an eating disorder. Family meals provide nutritional and social benefits and that's what I'm talking about when I talk about division of responsibility and modeling. We sit all together and you model what a meal looks like. Weight teasing and body shaming often lead to obesity, eating disorders, and extreme weight control behaviors. And health focus, not weight focus, for healthy behaviors and patterns. So this seems kind of apropos of nothing. I wasn't talking about weight. I was talking about a healthy relationship with food. But I'm always going to look for an information for, for an in to give you this information from the AAP, by the way, the American Association of Pediatrics. And this is as, as recent as 2016. So when we have a healthy relationship with food, starting from childhood, leading into adulthood, we don't have to worry about body size because we know that all meaningful indicators of nutrition are going to be in line. And we know that all social issues that are related to that are, are going to be handled. We're going to raise kids who feel safe and secure, who have a positive and adventurous attitude, kids who have compassion can think about the needs of others. Okay, so what, what can we do from here? What can we do from here? Well, I have a bunch of people you need to be following on Instagram, and of course, I'm the one that's at the top because, well, I'm the one giving, the, uh, giving this podcast. So I'm at toddler.test.kitchen. We have Body Positive Mom, Diana K. Rice, um, this is really small for me to read. I'm going to put this in the comments section and you can just go one by one and <laughs> click and follow all of these people. They are all going to give you fantastic advice to encourage you in a positive feeding dynamic between you and your child. It's going to lead you into, a, it's going to lead your child into being a naturally intuitive eater so they don't have to go back and read the book and read the workbook and work with a non diet dietitian. This is going to help create a positive dynamic around the table in your family. And if you are interested in finding out more about the particulars, the details on how to institute this in your home, I'm putting my email address up, raffi at babybloomnutrition.com. 
email me and I will get you registered for the webinar that I'm giving on July 8th at 8 p.m. That's Arizona time. I do not know what time that is in New Zealand. Um, Rosemma, I know you're watching. Maybe you can comment. <laughs> I don't know the time difference anymore. So I'm giving this webinar. It's going to be an hour to an hour and a half, depending on Q&A. It's only $12, but it's going to go over the ins and outs of, of division of responsibility and what it looks like in your family. And being that I'm a twin mom plus one, I can also address how to do division of responsibility when you've got two two-year-olds or two six-month-olds because it's totally different. Um, same concepts, a little bit different execution. So Yafi at babybloomnutrition.com. You can also follow me on Pinterest, pinterest.com slash Yafi. You're already on my Facebook, so hit the follow button. I'm on Instagram at toddler.test.kitchen. And speaking of Toddler Test Kitchen, if you are a Phoenix area local, come join me for Toddler Test Kitchen, the live in-person class for kids ages two through six. It's a unique culinary adventure for adventurous and hesitant eaters alike. And we have a really great time preparing nutritious recipes. And wink, wink, I teach you parents how to bring your kids into the kitchen safely because it is so much fun, but not for breakfast. Because healthy boundaries. Thank you for joining me. Tune in next week. I have a lot of fun topics coming up and I'm not sure what next week is. So you're just going to have to come and find out. If you have any suggestions for topics, please comment in the comment section. I am very happy to entertain any specific questions that I get. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week for nap time nutrition, 1 15 PM Arizona, which is 4.15 on the East Coast and 1.15 on the West Coast. But when all you people change your clocks, we don't. So <laughs> adjust accordingly. Thanks and see you next week.